Hello, thank you for today. It's a pleasure to be It can be hard to hear in a noisy room, especially if you're one of millions of people with hearing loss. Modern hearing aids can help in quiet environments, but they're not much help in loud noise where people need them the most. Our team at the University of Illinois is working on signal processing technologies that can help people to hear better in noise. It's not just for hearing aids. Better listening technology could apply to everything from personal sound amplifiers to smart headphones and augmented reality headsets. We call these applications augmented listening, technology that alters perception of the real world by processing the sounds that we hear. This talk is about one of the most important principles of augmented listening technology, how we can use spatial signal processing to modify the sounds around us. We will show that there's a trade-off between how much we enhance the sounds and how natural they seem. Suppose I'm in a crowded room with a lot of people talking at once. How can I tell what sound is coming from whom? Well, one of the most reliable ways to separate sound is with a microphone array. If we have several microphones spread apart in space, signals take different paths to reach each one. We can design a signal processing filter called a beamformer to isolate sounds coming from one direction. Beamforming is widely used in speech recognition systems and teleconferencing systems that need to focus on just one person who's talking. Since it's so useful in sound capture applications, it seems that beamforming should be helpful for listening devices, too. Researchers have been trying to do that for more than 30 years. And array hearing aids have worked well in lab experiments. They can reduce background noise and improve speech comprehension. So why isn't everyone walking around wearing microphone arrays? Well, a human listener is different from a computer speech recognition system. We're used to having multiple sounds around us, and our brains have powerful source separation algorithms built in already. Beamformers designed to isolate just one sound source can work well for a computer speech recognition system, but for a human listener, they could sometimes make things worse. First, removing all but one sound could be disorienting. Imagine being in a crowd and seeing everyone's lips moving but not hearing any sound come out. Our brains expect what we hear to match what we see. Second, if the beamformer doesn't work perfectly, it can cause distortion that throws off our natural source separation abilities. If I'm listening to a person talking, a dog barking, and a car honking, my brain knows exactly what those things sound like because I've heard them before, and so it can separate them pretty easily. But if I'm listening through a beamformer and it doesn't perfectly remove the dog and the car, uh, what's left over might be some distorted dog-car mashup uh, which my brain doesn't understand, and it can make it more difficult to hear. Finally, beamformers can hurt our spatial awareness. Humans can tell what direction a sound is coming from by comparing the signals in the two ears. A sound coming from my right will be louder in my right ear than in my left ear, and it will also reach the right ear first. Those cues are called interaural level difference and interaural time difference. In a binaural listening system, we can put microphones uh, in each of the two ears to capture sound with the correct spatial cues. Then we need two different beamformers, one to estimate the signal in the right ear and one to estimate the signal in the left ear. If we just want to focus on one sound, preserving the spatial cues of the target signal is straightforward. The filters perform a linear projection onto the transfer function of that target source. There's a serious side effect, though. Every sound goes through that same projection. So any sounds that aren't perfectly canceled by the beamformer will sound like they're coming from the direction of the target. If I'm driving in a car and I'm talking to a passenger on my right, uh, so my beamformer is pointed to the right, and then a car drives by on the left, it will sound like the car was actually on the right. And clearly that's no good. Researchers have been studying this problem for years and have come up with several solutions. One of the simplest is to add a fraction of the unprocessed signal back into the output. Other methods add extra constraints to the beamformer so it preserves the cues of some sources but not others. In all these approaches, it has been found that the more of the other sources we let through, the less they're distorted and the more natural everything sounds. That is, the less we try to isolate just one sound source, the better the system works. 
This paper builds on that observation, but instead of starting with a conventional beamformer and trying to reduce its distortion, we propose framing the problem differently. Let's think about augmented listening not as a beamforming or source separation problem, but as a source remixing problem, where we want to change the relative levels of the sources perceived by the listener. Consider the sound mixing process in a movie studio. The mixing artist starts with a separate recording of each actor and music track and sound effect, and they move sliders up and down on a mixing board to adjust the level of each one in the mixture. Uh, the mix is carefully balanced so the audience can understand the dialogue, uh, but still get the immersive effect of all the other sounds. Imagine if a listening device could do that same kind of careful mixing, but for real-life sounds. It would do as much or as little processing as it needs to uh, for the situation. So if I'm in a noisy restaurant, I might want to really turn down the other sound sources, and so I might want something closer to a single target beamformer. But if I'm cooking dinner for a guest at home, uh, I don't really need my listening device to turn down the sound of the sink running or the oven beeping. My auditory system can do that just fine on its own. Deciding how to adjust the level of each signal is a hard problem, and it's as much a hearing science question as it is an engineering question. But we can still study its implications for filter design. This paper considers the effect of the signal levels on the distortion caused by the remixing filter, especially for spatial cues. Our results confirm what past work has shown for uh, more conventional beamformers. The more we try to change the sounds, the more distortion we introduce. Now let's look at the remixing system in detail. We have an array of microphones with at least one microphone in each ear. The other microphones can be anywhere, but the more spread out they are on the body, the better the system will work. Next, we have sound sources. Each source produces a signal called the source image, C, which is the vector of signals due to that source uh, as picked up by all the microphones. It's as if we had recorded each sound by itself, like we would in a movie studio. Now, each source has a desired response, g, which can be any transfer function, but we'll focus on the case where it's an amplitude gain. In other words, each source has its own slider on our imaginary mixing board, and g is where we set the slider. If we really did have access to clean recordings of each source, we would just multiply each c by its corresponding g and add them all up to get our binaural output, y. As long as we apply the same processing in the left and right ears, the spatial cues will be preserved. Unfortunately, unlike a movie mixing artist, we don't have clean copies of each signal. We have their mixture, X, which is captured by our microphone array. We have to estimate Y from X. In this paper, we use something called a multiple speech distortion weighted multi-channel Wiener filter, which is a weighted minimum mean square error estimate in the paper, we analyze the error between the desired output and the actual output we get from the filter. After some algebra, we end up with this expression for the overall mean square error. There are two important terms. This one depends on how easy the signals are to separate, uh, how far apart they are, and how many microphones we have. This one is the pairwise difference between the desired responses. It's how far apart the sliders are on our mixing board. Now, this result shouldn't be too surprising. If I set the desired responses closer together, I've made the remixing problem easier. So, of course, the error is going to be lower. Now let's look at the error in spatial cues. Here we have three important terms. How separable the signals are, how different the desired responses are, and how different the spatial cues are to begin with. If I have two sources that are far apart, they'll be easy to separate, but their cues will be very different, so there might still be a fair amount of distortion. If instead the two signals are right on top of each other, so their spatial cues are the same, it doesn't matter how well I separate the sources, uh, the cues will still be correct. The math suggests that spectral and spatial distortion are both worst with the single target beamformer. At the other extreme, if we set all the responses to the same level, the distortion is zero. But in that case, we don't do any spatial filtering at all, we just apply the same gain to the left and right microphones. A practical remixing filter will fall somewhere between those two extremes. Processing the signals enough to be helpful, 
but not so much that we cause uh, a lot of distortion. Let's look at some experimental results with real recordings. We set up our mannequin with two hearing aid earpieces with two microphones each, surrounded by five loudspeakers playing speech recordings. We compared three sets of desired responses. The mild filter tweaks the signal levels a little bit, but mostly leaves them alone. The aggressive filter does more, but still tries to preserve a little bit of each signal. The single target filter is a conventional beamformer that tries to get rid of all but one source. These plots show the error in interaural time and level differences. As you can see, the mild filter distorts the spatial cues the least, and the single target filter distorts them the most. Now, what if we're in a challenging listening environment where we really need to apply some aggressive remixing? Well, if we can't change the desired responses, we need to make the signals easier to separate. And we can do that by adding more microphones. In the next experiment, we fitted the mannequin with a wearable array of 16 microphones spread across the body. The plots compare different array sizes, all for the aggressive set of uh, desired responses. The distortion is lower when we add more microphones. The larger the array, the more freedom we have to modify the sounds. The main takeaway from this work is that when we're designing augmented listening systems, there is a trade-off between signal enhancement, how much we want to change what the listener is hearing, and perceptual transparency, how much it sounds like the real world. The best approach is often to process the signals as little as possible and let the brain do more of the work. When we do need to make major changes to the sound scene, we can do that by using large microphone arrays. As these large arrays become more practical, it's important that researchers move beyond traditional single-target beamformers or source separation systems. Audio source remixing can provide a versatile framework for designing systems that change how we experience the world around us. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about how microphone arrays can change the way we hear, visit the Illinois Augmented Listening Laboratory blog.